Oh, the Buffalo Bills. For so many years, one of my favorite punching bags in the National Football League. And deservably so. They hadn't made the playoffs since the 1999 season. Remember? Back when Robo Sack started the playoff game instead of Doug Flutie? And they lost because of the Music City Miracle that we can also call the Nashville Nightmare? Why well, check to Dyson, that's all I'll say. And then they hired Rex Ryan and wasted two years with him. And so many Bills fans and so many people on here sat there and thought this was a great hire and he was going to finally get them over the hump and get them to the playoffs. Ah -ah! Because you realize just how much of a media hype Rex Ryan was and how much of an idiot he was. And again, they continue to be one of those favorite punching bags. But then... They go out and hire Sean McDermott, which felt like a solid hire. They break, get rid of Doug Whaley, the general manager, which surely had to be a godsend for a lot of Bills fans. And I'm sure not drafting Patrick Mahomes when he had fallen to your lap with the 10th pick was probably an impetus to make that decision. But looking at this Bills team in 2017 it was weird. Because you kind of thought they were in a somewhat tank mode, but not in a full tank mode. But you didn't really have a lot of expectations for them heading into the season. Especially when they're trading off Sammy Watkins and, you know, making these different moves or trading off Ronald Darby. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Because it sure, it wouldn't seem like, in theory, be helping them to contend and compete in 2017. It seemed like so much of what this organization was doing was being set up for 2018 and beyond. And to be fair to this organization, they did a very, very good job of that, and they are set up relatively well for 2018 and potentially beyond if they play their cards out well. But it didn't know what to expect with this team in 2017. And they came out and out of the gates, and they started off 5-2. and two. They're like, holy crap. The Bills can play a little. The Bills aren't bad. The Bills might actually be a good team. Sean McDermott might be an early candidate for Coach of the Year. And then during this time, they trade off Marcel Darius, like the guy that he once took as an organization, third overall in 2011. You send him packing for peanuts to the Jaguars. You bring in Calvin Benjamin, make that big move. It's like, what the hell? What are they doing? <laughs> but after they started off 5-2, and two, they got housed a couple of games in a row. Uh, Tyrod Taylor wasn't any good, and the defense got absolutely smoked. So Sean McDermott in one of these single stupidest decisions of 2017. Look, Tyrod Taylor is not very good. Agreed. But you bench him for Nathan Peterman, who proceeds to go out there and throw five picks in a half of football in Los Angeles. This is the type of decision that should get coaches fired. This most certainly is the type of decision that should submarine and sink a potentially promising playoff-bound type of season. Nathan Peterman was terrible. Like, it makes you wonder, with the decision to bench Tyrod, even though the bigger problem those previous two weeks was your defense had gotten absolutely smoked, yes, you have a quarterback that can't read defenses. Yes, you have a quarterback that can't see the field. Yes, you have a quarterback that can't reliably throw more than five yards or a check down, and that's it. But was there really that much that you were going to do that was going to be different with a fifth-round guy like Nathan Peterman? He lasted the fifth round for a reason. And then, once you saw how he performed against the Chargers in the first half, you wonder what the hell Sean McDermott saw, what the hell he was smoking! I mean, he was so bad, he was the number one trend on Twitter during that game against the Chargers. Oh, good Christ. I mean, so you're sitting there you're five and five. The Nathan Peterman disaster. And it feels like this Buffalo Bills season could go flying off the rails. But it didn't. They went four and two their last six games. They handled their business when they needed to. And then when it came down to after their week 17 win over Miami, they get to sit there and watch. And if Cincinnati can somehow, some way, find a path to beating the Ravens, the Buffalo Bills are going to end the longest playoff drought in the National Football League. 
It's not the Browns, it was the Bills with the longest playoff drought. And as Andy Dalton completed that pass to Tyler Boyd, and Tyler Boyd streaked through the Ravens' defense for a touchdown, you saw all the videos posted on social media and the internet. The Bills are celebrating the locker room's happy, and as they should be. You know what? Crap. No reason to hate them. That's almost two damn decades of misery, mediocrity, and suck. You got rid of the stink of Rex Ryan and what happened the first year, even with the stupidity of the Nathan Peterman decision, the Buffalo Bills made it to the playoffs. yee And you know what? While I'm usually not a huge fan of celebrating just barely making the playoffs and getting into the wild card round and then losing in the wild card round, for the Buffalo Bills, it's a big positive step. It is something. It is a way to change the culture and the environment in Buffalo, which was something that was desperately needed. Unfortunately, the season's end surely did not leave a great taste in a lot of the mouths of Bills fans. Your offense scored three points. Your quarterback was even worse than Blake Bortles if such a thing existed in that game. It did with Tyrod Taylor. And you lose to the Jaguars 10-3. to Three points scored in 60 minutes of playoff football. That's a rough watch, that's a rough game, a rough way to end the season. Surely not the ending you wanted, maybe you wanted to at least get greedy and win one playoff game, but it just didn't happen. And perhaps from the Pittsburgh Steelers standpoint, maybe they wish, <laughs> maybe they wish the Bills would have won. Ah, no they wouldn't have because the Bills would have had to play the Patriots. Never mind, whatever, who gives a crap? But you get what I'm saying. Maybe they do because then they would have played, what, Tennessee? Yeah, you know what, I stand by that. The Steelers probably wish the Bills would have won because then they would have gotten the Titans instead of the Jaguars. And maybe it would be the Steelers and the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. But probably not. They'd probably find a way to dip Mariota's dick in bronze and have him throw eight touchdowns in that divisional round game. Set all types of records. Because that's a stupid crap the Steelers do. But anyways, this is a video about the Bills. So 2017. Quite a number of good things happened. Uh, but still a disappointing end because once you get there, you don't want to lose like that. Uh, but now we head off into the off season. You've got your general manager in place. You've got your guy in Sean McDermott and head coach in place. And you feel like you're heading in the right direction. This team's got about $30 million or so in cap space. Uh, not a ton of big name free agents on their team. You know, Kyle Williams in his mid-30s, are they going to bring him back? Is he going to retire? Is he going to play some more? Uh, Jordan Matthews, you traded away Ronald Darby to get him. Are you going to keep him? He didn't do much, but did he not do much because he was hurt and just not very good, or did he not do much because your passing game stunk because Tyrod Taylor is terrible? I don't know. Um, I don't feel like this is a team that needs to tend to spend a ton in free agency because where they're going to make their hay potentially this offseason is the NFL draft. And as much as we could talk about the Cleveland Browns and the great job they did of accumulating draft pick currency, which was the one thing Sash, Sashi Hinky did. That's right, I said Sashi Hinky, because Sashi Brown, Sam Hinky, what the hell is the difference? They accumulate a bunch of draft pick currency. They're great at that. Terrible at picking. Trust process is my ass. You can get all types of currency, but if you don't know what the hell you're doing, it doesn't matter. It's just like playing the stock market. You could take somebody who knows what the F they're doing and give them a $1,000 and make that money back many times over, or you can give somebody who doesn't know a damn thing about what they're doing other than they got a million dollars and had the ability to get that million dollars and they could still lose their ass. It doesn't matter if you have the resources if you don't know what the hell to do with them. We will find out if this new Bills front office in their first draft knows what the hell they're doing or not. But they've got a lot of draft pick currency to play with. They've got two first round picks. They've got back to back. It's funny the way it worked out. Uh, because of that trade down from 10 to 27 in last year's draft where they still got Tredavious White and they got additional picks. They got the 22nd, 21st overall pick and the 22nd overall pick in round number one. In round two, they've got two second round picks, the 21st and 24th overall pick. They've got a third rounder, a fourth rounder, a fifth rounder. You got four picks between the first two rounds. Those are some premium picks. If the Bills play their cards well, they could potentially come out of this draft with three difference makers. And what I mean is maybe trading up in round one out of either 21 or 22 to move up some. Taking those two second round picks, you could potentially package them up to move up into round one. Or you could package one of them up along with the third round and move way up in round two. 
I mean, they've got a lot of draft pick currency to play with. For all you know, they could take either 21 or 22 and potentially trade out of that pick entirely and get a future first rounder in 2019. The Bills are set up very well here for the NFL draft, but they've got work to do there. Number one pick or need, obviously, is quarterback. Is it Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson? Who knows at that point in time? Maybe they fall in love with one of the guys like Josh Allen. I don't know how this is all going to play out. But they need a quarterback, and they need it in a bad, bad way. Because clearly Tyrod Taylor is not the answer. I don't feel like anybody out there on the open market is going to be a good fit. No, the Bills need to draft and develop their guy and find that long-term answer at the quarterback position. They must. Because until they do, they're going to be nothing more than what you saw this year. A team that is in the mix for the playoffs and doesn't really matter. They don't make a difference. Then they got to get better at wide receiver. Zay Jones didn't show me crap in his rookie season, but that could be because, again, that offense was terrible in the passing game and Tyrod Taylor stinks. Or it could be Zay Jones stinks. I don't know yet. Kelvin Benjamin, Jordan Matthews didn't show you much for sure in Buffalo, but, again, that could be the same circumstance. Feels like you still should draft another playmaker outside. This time, maybe somebody with some deep speed because when you look at Zay Jones and Jordan Matthews and Calvin Benjamin, none of them are known as big-time vertical threats. None of them are really big-time field stretchers, and they need a field stretcher. Then I look at running back, and I know people are going to say I'm crazy because they still got Shady McCoy, and Shady McCoy is still very good. He was the best player on that offense. I absolutely agree. That said, he's about to enter into his age 30 season, and you know what that could typically mean for running backs? Is there a crime against having two really good ones? No, especially if it'll get you more shelf life out of LaShawn McCoy. I feel like it's a big need. I feel like right tackle is still a big need on this team. A lot of needs on offense, and then maybe defensively, getting another edge rusher, uh, upgrading some at outside linebacker, or at least getting some young talent there. But this draft has to primarily be devoted to the offensive side of the ball. Find that damn quarterback and build around him. It must happen. It must happen. And the, the, the bad thing about it for the Bills is, is that they may have potentially played themselves out of position to get one of those top four or five quarterbacks unless they make a move up. We'll see. But this will be an interesting Bills team to watch this offseason. They are going to be power players in this draft. And if they do it well, they can bide their time into maybe in two or three years, they'll be running the AFC East after the Patriots fall off.